Hey girl, welcome. Welcome. I don't want to call it the table because I know Jada got her show. Okay, okay. The green table, the planted table. Right. The welcome wooded to, tables. Right. Welcome <laughs> to the seats, the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you are here and I'm glad you came from LA, came far. Not really. I like the drive. You like the drive? I really do. Okay. I'm glad you have that sentiment because <laughs> so many people complain that I had to drive all the way from LA. I'm like, it's really it's not that just bad. an hour and a half, and it's really nice drive. Honestly, I I need an excuse to get out of the city, so it's fine. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's always a pleasure to have you. So let's get into your introduction. Tell the audience who you are, what you do, what you're about. I'm Chelsea Von Chaz. I'm a menstrual equity worker. I'm a womb warrior. I am a founder of a charity also board members of a couple other charities that are within the uh, women's reproductive space. My charity is Happy Period, which is a educational wellness brand that's centered on menstrual health and giving people access to safe period products. Um, we serve folks who identify as women, girls, femme, gender expansive humans, anyone that has a period, that's who we serve, essentially. I also work for, uh, well, I'm a board member of Period Equity, which is another nonprofit organization that's centered on removing the tampon tax here in the US. And um, yeah, my work there is also centered on educating folks about the tampon tax, uh, making sure people are aware that um, you know, it's something that does discriminate against you if you have a period, if you're in a state that um, essentially has a tax on the sale of your period products. Um, you know, it's unfair, it's unethical, especially when there's public spaces that essentially give you free products to help with your hygiene. Like we go in the restroom, there's toilet paper, there's soap and there's water. Um, we even have restrooms that are family friendly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. but we don't have, we still don't have access to, you know, to, to peer products, especially if you have, if you have a period. So, so yeah, so that's the work that I do there. And that's a lot of work. It is. Are you proud of yourself? <laughs> I'm always proud of you. Um, just Thank watching you. you grow since I met you and all your endeavors. Um, you said you started a charitable organization called, is We Are Happy Period? Yes. Happy Happy period. Mm -hmm. We are happy period. And y'all can find we are happy period on Instagram. Um, yes. But t you told me a little bit about how you started it. But mm -hmm. why don't you go ahead and tell the audience? Because I think it's. Yeah. Amazing. So. So, I mean, before because happy period is about to be seven years old in February. So before I even got the idea to start a charity, I was in wardrobe. So I was still doing styling gigs. Um, my last gig at the time, I was kind of in between like freelancing and then figuring out if I wanted to do, um, well, more so if I wanted to join the costume guild. So that's when I signed on to do Insecure. So in between doing Insecure, I, I still hated my, my job. I still hated it. I, no, seriously, I didn't, I didn't like it. I was like, this is, I need to do something else. Like it's not really serving me. There's perks to styling. You know, it's fun. You can be creative to a degree. You meet people. Um, but I just really wasn't into like the superficial thing. And then also, um, you know, you, you still get boxed in in a way, especially when you're moving up into trying to get credits to join Costumers Guild. Um, you know, jumping from different departments or doing freelancing, but I had enough. <laughs> but in that process of just trying to figure out what I was doing, just in, you know, in between um, serving or more so assisting other assistants that were at a higher level than me um, in their uh, in their career. I was going to leave in one job and go to another one. And I was driving in LA and I saw this girl, this black girl across the street and she had a period stain on her butt. And I can tell that she was experiencing homelessness. Like she really didn't have any clothes on. She was she was all like dirty and um, kind of like ripped up in rags, um, but she just crossed the street and, and I saw a piercing on her butt. And I was just like, 
and I'm in my car, like driving, and, and I'm, I'm at a red light. So that's how I just had a moment where I could see it. And I'm like, does anybody else see this shit? Is anybody else looking? And mind you, I'm in LA. I was at La Brea and Third. I remember exact address. La Brea and Third, not too far from the Grove, pretty much like in between Hollywood and almost like West Hollywood. So Ritzy Poo area, but mad folks who are, you know, essentially houseless. I don't like to say the word homeless because it, it, you know, assumes that you don't have a home or there's no placement for you. But it's like, no, the experience is you are houseless, you know, or apartmentless, you know, and that's for a lot of people because a lot of people actually couch surf right. <laughs> and still have a home, right. you know, like <laughs> that's just what it is. It's reality for today. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot that we witness in that area, I mean, everywhere here in the US and even from a global perspective, like poverty is real, right? Um, but yeah, I just had a moment because so many thoughts went in my mind, like, damn, if you are on the street and you get your period, like, what do you do and where do you go? What resource do you have? And yeah, then I was on my period that day and I was like, damn, but what if you're cramping? What if you're constipated? What if you have diarrhea? What if you're bloated and nauseous? Like all these things that we actually go through, we're on our periods and then you don't have your Motrin or whatever, you know, you don't have herbs to take care of you. You don't have water. It was just literally a panic attack at the red light in my mind. So I didn't approach her. She was not in the, in the position to be approached. Uh, Cause people ask me that all the time. Like, why didn't you just approach her? And it's like, no, she was not in a position to be approached. And I always educate people on, you don't have to always approach people. Um, but I did reach out to some shelters to get answers about, you know, what, what kind of resources are there for folks? I think I called or emailed like, I don't know, like seven or eight shelters within LA County. And then one did email me back with some type of response. Um, but I did get someone on the phone who, you know, was, I could tell was kind of like over their job and um, rightfully so. I mean, you know, it's, that's a tough job to have, whether you administration for a shelter um, or transition home or whether you actually work, you know, hands on with the people. But anywho, I mean, the main thing that they told me was that um, legally they are not obligated as a shelter to allocate any part of their budget for menstrual products. So even if they serve folks who identify as women, folks who have periods, they don't have to allocate their budget to actually like go out and purchase period products or even um, have a set uh, amount for, you know, to allocate that expense, just like they have to do for water, food, yeah. maintenance, operations, cleaning and things like that. Um, so they do rely on folks to just donate these things. And then the second part of that, people don't donate period products. Why? Because we don't talk about periods. We don't encourage people to talk about periods. Uh, we don't encourage people to donate period products. Like, you know, the number one item that people donate to homeless shelters is like canned goods as far as like an item. And then maybe number two would be socks, blankets, depending on the location. Um, but when I asked her about um, what product do they, you know, as far as a hygiene product, what do they get on a regular basis? And she legit said um, razor blades and shaving cream for the men. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, wow. She was like, yeah. And then, of course, you know, soap, toothpaste. Mm -hmm. I was like, no period products. And she said, no. And I was like, well, what if, you know, somebody comes in your office and they literally, you could tell they're on the period and they need something. And she was like, honestly, like on the regular, we tend to just go in our own purses and just give it to them because we don't have anything in our pantry. Nobody's donating. So, so yeah, that was enough for me to hear, you know, so I just, in my mind, I was like, well, if I don't do this, then it's going to be too many women walking around here <laughs> needing period products and no one's there to help them. So, right. And you just called me out because as you were talking, I was like, damn, I've never donated period products. Oh, really? And I donate stuff all the all time. All the time, yes. And that's real. Like, I was like, ooh, yeah, I have never done that. Yeah, because it's, it's also weird, too, to think about, like, the psychology of it because when we think of someone who is experiencing homelessness, we, kind, we tend to put the two genders or all genders all in one box. So we don't look at the female or someone who, might, who may have a period experience differently than 
a man's experience or someone who does not have a period if they're homeless or if they're experiencing homelessness. So nobody's really thinking, oh, just because this person is houseless, that doesn't mean that their period is gonna stop. Or just because, you know, there's a natural disaster, that doesn't mean the like, periods are just going to stop or, you know, it's, so again, this kind of falls back into the whole stigma and taboo surrounding like, okay, we're not even talking about periods, nobody's thinking about them, so why would people care about them either? Okay. Yeah. So I remember the first time I had even heard the term period poverty was mm -hmm. basically when I met you and I learned more about your work. So can you define what that is for the audience? Yeah, I mean, I've talked, I used another term too, which is um, menstrual equity. So mm -hmm. menstrual equity is the education, affordability, and access to be able to manage your menstrual cycle. Um, someone that falls into period poverty may not have uh, any of those, like they don't have the access they cannot afford period products, and then they also don't know how to manage their own period because there's a lack of education there. And so when we're thinking about like the poverty cycle, especially for folks who um, identify as women or girls, um, there's, this, there's this extra expense that we have over something that we actually have no control over. So if a woman or a girl or anyone gender expensive does not have the money to afford period products, there's like so many ways and how they can get caught up in poverty or in the system. Um, I can use the example of someone who, well, a very common example actually, someone who is out living on the street and they go steal period products and then they get caught and they get locked up. Locked up. Now they're in that cycle just from their period that they really can no, have no control over. Um, someone who misses out on school because their parents or you know, they don't have access to period products and they choose not to go to school because they don't, A, want to be embarrassed by just flowing at school, and two, simply because they just don't even have it at home, they're not going to leave their home to go out and potentially be exposed at school. So that's like two main examples of how like you are, what well, that person is kind of hindered because they don't have access to something that they can't control, especially something as simple or something as natural as you know, a period. Um, yeah, and then, you know, the poverty itself is just already something that's crazy that it, exi it exists, and there's so many avenues and how people can fall into it. Um, but something that's, again, normal and natural as, as periods, to me, is just, it's crazy how that's like, that's another factor of how folks with periods can just kind of fall into, you know, a cycle without even, you know, knowing, with no assistance either. Okay, so now we understand period poverty, right? Mm -hmm. We understand menstrual equity, as you said. Now, how does an everyday person go into their local communities and advocate for this issue? I mean, there's, everybody's different. So, of course, it's going to be based on folks' comfortability, right? Um, you know, I think the first thing is that we really have to get comfortable with periods. <laughs> like we just have to get comfortable with menstruation. Like it, it, it perpetuates humanity. Like we have to have periods. We have to have an entire menstrual cycle, which is, which is more than just the menstruation part. You know, there's other parts of the, of the entire cycle. There's four stages of the cycle. So it's like we have to have this to happen in order for us to create more humans, right? So we have to, one, start talking about periods. We have to start educating people about periods. So anyone that wants to be involved, especially if they're a teacher, administrator, school principal, we need some type of challenge with institutions so that way they understand why periods are so important. Um, I mean, it's just, that's, to me, that's like the number one thing, you know what I mean? Just making sure that students, um, all students, not just girls, or students identify as girls, Make sure all students, all kids know what a period is and why it's super, it's, it's super important. Um, as far as, you know, other options, donating to charities, um, being there for other people who have periods, and if, even if you don't. <laughs> I mean, because there is like a, a code that we have having a period to look out for each other. Uh, but I think the, the rest of the world just needs to kind of get on board with that because for some, you know, unfortunately, because they're not on board, they're making it harder for us 
to have this, you know, experience to be able to manage it, you know, one, why there's a tax on tampons, two, why there's no public access to products, and then three, why there's no education about your periods, you know, even if you are, whether you're in middle school, high school, or elementary school. So yeah, it's really gonna take folks to just get comfortable with periods and just make like a personal initiative to change it. And you do some of that education. So yeah. I want you to plug yourself because educators can hire you. I know we've been talking about you wanting to get into the schools for a while. Right, now. right. Oh, for sure. Because it's, it's a challenge. It's, <laughs> I roll my eyes every, you know, every time I think about it because it's such a challenge, you know, because I'm always um, encouraging them to include the boys. I'm always encouraging them to go as young as eight, nine years old because you can be that young and get your period. I'm always encouraging them to don't just have the period products at the nurse's station, put them in the restrooms. The students have to go to the restrooms on a regular basis anyway. Stop, you know, enforcing these, um, you know, kind of uh, just unnecessary uniform policies that really don't, you know, um, uphold the students in a positive way, you know, and same thing with bathroom policies too. I think it's almost, I mean, it may be controversial to say, but it's almost like prison. It's like lining them up for prison low key, you <laughs> yeah. know, with all the rules and regulations and just such a, such a um, restriction on the person's body or the kid or student's body. So yeah, it's been a long time coming. Um, the main thing right now is the vending machine. So we have the PPE machine, which uh, stands for Period Protection Essentials. So that's a machine that I created over um, after COVID or not even after child, we still in COVID. <laughs> not even funny, but it's like, it's still know, present, know. you know? So I should say more so during quarantine, came up with the idea to create a vending machine. And so with that, I put that in a, um, more so in like a women's center at first, but we do plan on replicating that so that way schools actually have some type of dispenser or a little kiosk that can go in the restrooms for the students so it's not just them going to the nursing station when they have you know a oops or you know a mess up their clothes because they get their period at school but yeah it's like our own way of challenging the institutions like i said but also making sure the students have the essentials that they need without having to worry about how i'm gonna pay for this what if my mother doesn't have this? You know, like, we don't know. I think a lot of us, especially teachers, sometimes can assume that their students are not poor or that their students are not um, living in poverty or that, you know, they just know what their period is or they know what to do. It's like, we can't be assuming this anymore. That's so true. And y'all yeah. gotta follow her at We Are Happy Period because those period vending machines, that yeah. whole concept is so cool. And you designed it like, it's just like, it's just like how you dress. Like you just do things <laughs> cool and I hip. And isn't it like touch expression. screen too? Yes, it does have like a touch screen, little screen on it that kind of explains what it is. So it is educational. It is something that uh, promotes the organization, but it more so just lets you know like, hey, this is absolutely free. Um, yeah, but you just click on it and it'll dispense out a little package, which, you know, is kind of like a pack because we don't really... I'm also not about telling people what products to use because I think it's just more so about making sure this is arranged, you know, here for you so you know the difference between reusable versus re disposable. Um, so the pack that the machine has actually has pads, tampons, and liners in it. Um, but for Happy Period as a whole, we also do, you know, promote folks learning about non-conventional products like period panties, menstrual cups, menstrual bis. So. Yeah, it's a little step into the future, but. And you do it so me. well, I'm tell you right now, like my, after just one, us being friends first and then mm -hmm. learning more um, just about period, about poverty, about menstrual equity. Um, I don't even wear tampons anymore. I think wear. you do. <laughs> <laughs> you do not the one. Like, Everybody's you like, yo, me. I, <laughs> I, was like, I appreciate you. Cause I mean, this is what I do and I, I don't think I did this to you though, but usually what I do is I go in everybody, all my girlfriend's bathrooms and I just throw all y'all shit away. Like whatever is in the, under the sink that I don't approve of, it's like, nope, I throw it away. But I replace it 
And so maybe with you, I just gifted you a cup or underwear or something. No, I don't know. What changed my life? Like, I had always knew what you did. Mm -hmm. but you came out here for the film festival. Yes. And we went and saw that film. Okay. And then just the discussions we were having after, I learned about mm -hmm. the, what's it called? Diva Cup? Mm -hmm. Diva Cup. Mm -hmm. And then we started talking about, like, um, what's the Honey Co? What's oh, Honey yeah. Pot. The Honey, honey Pot, Pot Company, yes. I only buy her stuff now. See? That, uh, what's it called? It's not a, I don't want to call it a diffuser, but it's basically it's something that pH pH balance. yes for the pH balance. I use yeah. that all the time after mm -hmm. I after I finish my mm -hmm. cycle amazing the cleansing nice product. cleanse yeah and I use her tampons are amazing they like <laughs> they like heat up your vagina or something <laughs> I don't know it's like mint infused I don't know what it is but like it takes that whole smell of blood away I'm like sis you are from the heavens above. I love it I love it yeah. I love it no I love Beatrice she's amazing um, I love that there's so many women in this space of period products like it's not just Kotex Tampax uh, which are majority run by men and founded by men really? but now there's mm -hmm, even the tampon was invented by a man crazy but a black woman created the pads with wings though with the belt with the belt oh on I do yeah. remember you yeah sharing yeah that, learning that for sure so I'm happy now that we're spreading the word again just about different products so now people can make better choices for themselves you know if, if it's a you know if it has something to do with their wallet the environment like if they're conscious about sustainability you know whatever it is like yeah i'm happy well I'm so all my girlfriends like yo you uh <laughs> switch me up sis i can't go back and it's like why would you <laughs> you did and now i'm every time i meet someone else or I'm dealing with my sisters now I'm always like educating you I'm like you better go follow my friends <laughs> I love it it's I mean it's um I don't I don't be I don't mind being called the period person or the period girl or the period girl I really I don't I don't mind I have a homegirl Dr. Charis Chambers who she's the period doctor on Instagram mm. and I feel that way about her because she educates me so much like on another level on a medical level because there is um you know i didn't go to medical school but there's so much that we can learn and like what she does teaching women about all these different disorders um you know just the options that we have when it comes to like healthcare choices and advocating for your body which i'm hugely about you know because people are a lot of us with periods like you know our first encounter with doctors OBGYN is dealing with our vagina and it's like automatically uncomfortable <laughs> because we're talking to somebody that we don't know who does not look like us about our vaginas and it's like I'm supposed to trust you and I'm supposed to open my legs and let you look at me <laughs> really really no yeah it's a lot it's just it's 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 super uncomfortable as it is so the work that we're doing is to really try to undo that or to just make it better so that way folks are more encouraged and feel a lot more positive about going to a doctor, you know? Yeah. Well, I know we could talk about this for hours. Yes, but we, we can. Don't, we don't have hours. So <laughs> what are ways that people can continue to support your work? Like, yeah. first, let's just say it financially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're a charity. So that's the, that is the first challenge, like just donating um, grants, fundraising, um, working with VCs, working with other social enterprises, working with other organizations, like we're just, I'm open to it. I'm more about collaboration over the whole competition thing. I think it's, if, if I choose to have some type of competition thing with another organization, it should be based on like, okay, well, how many folks can we get off the street? Or how many folks can we actually secure jobs for? Um, yeah, so anybody that contacts me, just know I don't work for free. It's that slavery. I have to honor my ancestors by not working for free. I don't talk on the phone, consult for free, um, giving out advice. You know, even though I do see a lot of what's going on in this industry of what's not happening or the voids that are not being filled. But in order for me to give that, it's like you have to make a donation. You have to, you know, book me. Um, and that's the best way, honestly, to, to support me and the organization by just coming correct and being ready to work. So that's through We Are Happy Period, mm -hmm. at We Are Happy Period on Instagram. On Instagram, yes. Website is? Hashtag happyperiod.org. Hashtag happyperiod.org. And that's what it is. Well, thank you for joining me in our seats. That's what I'm 
<laughs> okay. And the seats. I don't know. I'm going to come up with something because this is a little cute setup we got here. It is. I dig it. Yeah. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And thank you all for tuning in to Voices of Liberation.